Three weeks after DDOT canceled three bus routes and consolidated several others, performance levels on bus arrivals have improved. But riders say the decision to downsize the system, even temporarily, has further squeezed an overwhelmingly low-income group of people at a time when they say more access and more investment is needed, not less. 7 Action News reporter Amira David hears from the essential riders who say it's grown more difficult to depend on the bus to get them where they need to go. Well, I've been riding the bus, you might as well say, at least 55 of these years. As a lifelong bus rider, Rochella Stewart has her morning routine down to a science. Get ready to leave at 9, out the door at 9.15, followed by a seven-minute walk to the bus stop. But no longer part of that scientific equation is the time she can expect to spend commuting to work. Well, it should take me maybe an hour to 40 minutes to get there, but on the worst case scenario, uh, I say it's like two and a half hours. Buses don't come when they're supposed to come, and the system does not work. It's the same story for 76-year-old Larry Verse. Riders feeling squeezed by changes within an already beloggered transit system. DDOT recently canceling three routes while reducing frequency on several others. As we have more operators, we will be changing our temporary service changes back to where they need to be. DDOT says the change is already allowing for more timely service, but many question at what expense. It's going to be people out here with frostbite, elderly that can't get to a stop within 10 minutes. But how far is that walk to get to that next stop? Our access to grocery, healthy foods, medical care is limited. Transit justice organizer Renard Munchansky worries the impacts of reduced service, even temporarily, could further disrupt a system he says has long been void of critical investment. It is a public service that has been underfunded and undertreated for years. When was the turning point? During the Mayor Bing administration, service was was abysmal. Riders have seen improvements since, but investment still lacking. We found Southeast Michigan spends just $76 per capita on transit compared to an average of 211. Nearby Cleveland spends 216. Imagine the investment that can go into transit that can uplift the lives of people. I understand that people out there are frustrated. Uh, we're doing the best that we can with what we have, and I can assure you that our goal is to expand not to take away. But until that goal is reached, Rochella plans to fight, taking on the role of transit organizer. Information in here you can get on your phone. Advocating on behalf of the riders, she believes are often unheard and unseen. They should get out, ride the buses more often, see what it's like, the time that they stand in at a stop. And then maybe they might have some feeling towards what these essential bus riders is going through. Riders tell me it really comes down to accessibility and reliability. They say the true test is investment. DDOT is expecting around $51 million in new COVID recovery funding. So there's a real opportunity here for big upgrades and improvements. Riders want to see it go to expanding night and weekend service, growing the reduced fare program and more competitive pay for drivers. But how the dollars are allocated remains to be seen. Discussions on the topic are expected to start in January. We'll stay on top of it. I'm Amira David, 7 Action News.